Hello, I'm Gene Simmons, the director of the Southern California Youth Chorale. The purpose of our organization is to provide unique opportunities for the musically talented young people in Southern California. It gives them an opportunity to express themselves in music, as well as to provide opportunities for travel and communication with people of various countries. Over the past 10 years, we have performed in 10 different countries, including most of Western and Eastern Europe, Russia, Japan, and China. Our story really begins at a rehearsal in the choral music room. In the choral room, we're especially interested in developing the voice as a musical instrument. Uh, that goes into uh, the vocal instrument itself, how to breathe, how to produce the tone, uh, blend, balance, diction, the meaning of the song. I suppose the most difficult is that of the concept of tone and tone production because the students come from various kinds of backgrounds and uh, in order to get this uh, gelled into one feeling of sound, uh, it's difficult to get that concept across to everyone. I think many times it get very intense, yes, because in trying to pull something out of them, an emotion or a feeling or uh, some way for them to really project the style of the song, to get into it, immerse themselves completely into the music. I think I'm very demanding on them sometimes, yes. Well, because uh, I have a certain uh, goal that I want to accomplish, and I have seen in the past that I know students are really capable of doing almost anything that they really get into and want to, and I know what can be done with them, and uh, I am very demanding about it being done that way. Well, they will eventually come. I have no fear of that. It's just sometimes it takes a little longer than others. I I think we're in good shape at this point. I feel very good about it. Um, I told the group this morning I was disappointed in the, the music, but, um, you know, music, even though you know it, it takes a little while for it to uh, gel, for it to come together, and it, it, it takes living with music for a little while before it takes on a meaning. So that's where we are now, I think. it's time for the music to be gelling and to set and to come into a unity and a oneness that will happen. Uh, as far as uh, how I approach uh, teaching them the material, I assume that they will get it. And with that kind of a, an attitude, it's, it seems to carry over and the kids realize that uh, they're expected to get it because I assume they can do it. So everybody's assuming, and eventually kind of uh, follows right through, and they do do the material. The kids really will work and uh, get the look that I want. Uh, I think a lot of it is just uh, determination. Uh, a lot of that is uh, accomplished through run-throughs, because once they get the timing and the pace of the show by doing the run-throughs, say we only have one medley to work with, well, we'll run that through three and four times over consistently. We'll do the run-through, we'll stop, we'll give notes, we'll do the run-through again, stop and give notes. The easiest. Uh, I don't know, because just when I think something is easy, it starts to get messy, and then it becomes uh, a thorn in my side. So uh, it's unpredictable. There is no real security in it at all. There are too many, there are too many uh, uh, questionable factors involved because the cast is almost 80 people. And I mean, there's, there's, there are too many possibilities of mistakes. To be very honest with you, it is very exciting at the end of this show to see all my ideas coming to life on that stage. I mean, uh, they're Jean's ideas, they're Virginia's ideas, and they're my ideas, but to see those things happen uh, is very exciting because a thought has been 
has been transferred to a, a, a visual and audio medium that uh, an audience can enjoy. And it isn't just a fantasy in the head. Uh, today we're going to have auditions for You Are the Sunshine of My Life. How many are trying out today? Let me see your hands. Okay. <laughs> The auditions for the solos are extremely important uh, to the members of the chorale. We do like to give everyone an opportunity to try out. And uh, we are looking especially for those with uh, good voices. But I think probably as important as a good voice is the, that person's ability to sell a song and to project the song and the meaning to the audience. personality, someone who understands the words and who can make that important uh, contact with the audience. It gets really, really very difficult at times to make a selection because we come to a point where we have three or four people who do it equally well. Now, how are those people going to stand up during a performance or several performances? Uh, will their performance as an individual participation, will it continue to grow and develop or will it stay where it is now? And those are things that we try to project in that person's personality as he performs. Judging is being done by the directors, Mr. Jacobs, instrumental, and Mrs. Turbig, and uh, Bob uh, Huddle on the drums, and myself. There's bound to be disappointments, as I have talked with them about this many times, when they don't get something. But I think this particular group is very good about it. They seem to cheer the other person on and uh, want to support them. And so far, I haven't noticed any uh, competition, yes, but uh, really no, uh, I say, despair or anything of that sort if they don't get the part. <laughs> Yellow Ribbon, Alan. And for Saturday in the Park, we're going to postpone that until Monday because we want, uh, we want uh, Karen and Joanne and Doug and Eileen to sing it all the way through before we make a final decision. And for Sunshine, uh, Robin. Okay, girls, listen, we have to uh, do Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Now, I understand you're the three girls who have been selected to do it, singing-wise, right? Very much. Now, we have to stage it. So, is this the right uh, arrangement for you this way? One, two, three, or would it be better if you were reversed? 
or does it matter? Uh, Who's low? Matter. Who's low? Matter. I'm low. You're low. Where I'm are middle. You? You're middle. You're hot. Fine. Why don't we leave it like that? Okay. okay let's get started. Not a folk star that no one else could play. That's he was it. A tough, but he's strong. Okay. 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 Now, what you have to do is, from here, the hands are up. Okay. Now, he was the top man at his craft. Okay, so give me just a sway to the right. Da 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 da. Okay. Okay. But keep it, keep in the feeling of the of the uh, the period. Okay. Keep it very square. Da, da. Uncle Sam. That's it. Good. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Finish. Okay. It's right foot, left, left our hand. See, right like that. Okay. Well. Okay. Straight out. Okay, right. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. Don't give me the words. Okay. Five, six, let's go. And they were shopping at the North Chicago way. Oh, here, oh, here. Here. No one else could play. He was a top man at his craft. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Here we go. Sell out, sweetheart. Don't look at her. Okay. Don't look here. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Hey. Famous top man from Mount Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was a top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the drop. He's in the army now, a blown revelry. He's a boogie boogie bugle for company B. It made a walk bugle for his Uncle Sam. It really brought him down because he couldn't jam. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next day the cap went out and dropped to the back. And now the company jumps when he plays revelry. He's the boogie woogie doo boogie 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 Individually, we all have got it. We have to get it together, though. We have to just get it so it looks like three, three people together instead of three individuals. Well, the girls started out very well. Uh, they were doing a good job, and they're really getting into the song. However, so we just may have to make uh, some time. changes and on this to get that number across. See, I have to have the end in there, okay? Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You're just sort of standing there like that. Okay, it's like your bra strap. Is broken. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, you're <laughs> right. it's like a broken bra strap. Here we go. Okay. And right from the top. Five, six, seven, eight. The intent was to have the girls in full costume with a 1930-ish look with shoulder padding, wigs. The choreography you have seen developed was to add to the authenticity of the number. However, uh, time closed in and as you'll see, the costumes ended up consisting of a hat while the choreography had to be abandoned. With more time, I think both problems could have been overcome. It seemed that the movement that they were doing, because the microphone is very directional and they have to be in close, the minute they turn in any direction, we lose sound. So the movement has had to be cut down completely so that we can get the sound. Once we're running our run-throughs, I take notes on everything. So if I see the girl scratching her head in the wrong place, I'll tell her. And the kids realize too, I think, which they don't realize in the beginning is, even though it's a large cast, everybody is seen. And if one of them makes a mistake, I'm gonna jump on them for it. Say, I'm gonna have a note about it. Well, they don't wanna get that note again. So they're gonna try very hard to correct it. So that's, I think, uh, a lot of uh, what contributes to the show. Karen. Our uh, soloist, Karen, where are you, sweetheart? Yes, honey, you've got one step going the whole time. You've got to find something else to do. You've got to use that dance ability. You've told me that you have. What, where is he? Where is it? There he is. What are you supposed to come in on, a downbeat or an upbeat? You came down on the reverse of what you're supposed to come down on. I can't tell what you're singing. It's just a big glee club sound, which is not Mr. Simmons' fault, because what I'm hearing in the choral room is not what I'm hearing on this stage. Something. 
that you've got to keep fighting for, and that's articulation. Crisp, clean show, not a fluffy high school production, because that's what it looks like right now. Still in all, it was the best first dress rehearsal I've seen SCYC ever do. Yeah, I'd never, uh, never rehearsed so, uh, so thoroughly for anything before. And uh, SCYC, just once you get out of school in June, SCYC is really the, your life. It's just phenomenal. I don't know really how how it all comes together. It seems to every year, but it's it uh, is really nip and tuck, and there's always a lot of extra things besides just the music and the dance that go into it. It's really shown me a lot of what professionalism is. This group has, and what I need to know, and what I need to do, and how to go about it. Mr. Simmons has helped me a great deal. He's coached me in voice, and Paul has helped me a lot in dancing and style and grace and all sorts of other things like that. So, and selling. <laughs> That's one thing I think I have. Selling. I had suspicion that it was a lot of work, but I didn't really know how much it was until I did get in the group. I didn't really know it was going to be like, you know, Sing your throats out in the morning, dance your feet off in the afternoon. But I'm sort of glad it's the way it is because it adds variety. He is a perfectionist, and we go over over and over. And that's how they get a good show, because of perfection. This group really puts on good shows because it is knitted together by the time the first concert comes as a family. Well, this is my second year. I went also in 72. I'm doing a lot of dancing. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, a lot more than I did before. Since I'm not a dancer, I have to really concentrate on it. Most difficult part? Just the physical strain, I think. Um, it's very exhausting, and you have to be so in shape to get through this show. I mean, I'm exhausted now. We've only did, done one medley. Okay? So from here, where are you? You're here? Yeah. All right, you just step out one and two. That's front for you. Yes, okay. Clear me is going very well. It's exactly what it should be. It's a very exciting discotheque jazz dance number. That is being done, I think, very well by the way. I'm very pleased with the material because for the first time I've really made dance production a dance number rather than a a number that's hoped up to make the audience think is it's sensational. It's very hard material. The kids are working very hard on it. And uh, I would say by far it's the most difficult dance production they have done. I don't know whether the audience will think it is as okay. good as it's perhaps like last the year or the year before. Anything. But uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm uh, happier with it than I have been with any yeah, previous that's dance. what it is. If it works for you that way, do it that way. Yeah. Uh, Bill, your carol's part on it, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Okay, come on. Took me over and showed me the exact same step in reverse. And, and, oh, sure, okay. <laughs> I'm off. I'll just whip that out right now. I know it was really difficult. Uh, I've got I've got moves now that I never thought I'd be able to do. I, I've got isolation things where I only move a certain part of my body on a beat. And it's just fantastic, you know, to be able to do things like that. So some of the people come in here and they just, I cannot do this. They say that. And people like that will end up in dance production. And they thought they'd, they'd never be able to do things like that. It's something the entire, the entire show comes to do. Just pull things out of you that you never thought you'd ever do. It's becoming a lot easier. So that at least it's a, okay. Can you do that and Paul can teach it, but I need to learn her, and she can teach it to me as a way that I can teach it. Uh, Carolyn has been fantastic in uh, really, in an unspoken way, kind of assisting me. And so uh, Bill and she have been working on this kind of way. It's really contained. Everything you do has to be really contained and controlled. So you've got to use a lot of energy, and you've got to try and sell it. You've got to keep everything right there so that you know exactly what's going on and everything. And it's the 
Try to find the better one. Really. It's, it's, it's a scary feeling, but it's a good feeling when you finally get it down. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and eight. All right, take five. We usually have over 35 rehearsals before our first performance. That's about 200 hours of rehearsal for a two-hour show. And for the past several years, we have had many local performances before we go overseas. And recently, we have concluded our season here at the Music Center, just like we're doing tonight.
Hey, kids, what time is it? And how do duty, Buffalo Bob? Well, howdy, Mr. Duty, and boys and girls at home, and kids in the gallery, let's go!
Thank you. 